Welcome to video 15 in a series of introductory videos for the Solicam CNC programming software. This video's topic is creating a new turning or mill turn part. So uh, what we'll do here is we'll start with the basic turning part. Everything you'll see up until a certain point is the same as the milling module. I'm just going to go Solicam, new, and instead of milling, I'm going to choose one of my two modules here. The difference between mill turn and turning is simply the access to the milling toolpaths. If you chose turning, then you wouldn't be able to choose milling toolpaths. Obviously, it is just for a lathe. But in turning, you only get one offset. You only get Mach 1, position 1, like we saw in, um, in video 3 of this series. Mach 1, position 1, just referring to the setup access. If you choose mill turn, you get access to the milling toolpaths as well as you get the ability to set up multiple MAC positions. And in turning, sometimes that's important. That could be side one and side two of your part. That could be uh, for an overlong part. You could have multiple setups and steady rests and tail stocks and all that stuff. So in mill turn, it gives you the ability to set up all those different options. Even though it's a mill turn module, if we chose a lathe post, it limits us again to just turning toolpaths. But you choose the mill turn module so you get the full functionality, those multiple offsets. But other than that, everything is the same here, external versus internal, the name of the file, where it's being saved, and the units we're going to use for measurements. I'll just click the green check mark. That closes the original file, opens up my copy of it. And again, like I mentioned, you can choose your post. In this case, if you choose a turning post or a lathe post, you only get turning toolpaths. But inside the mill, mill turn module, you still get the multiple offsets. If you choose a mill turn post, then you get options to use the milling toolpath as well. For coordinate system, it's similar to what we saw in video three. You have the five options here, and you've got this entire window here to choose from different geometries. Most often, you're going to use the center of revolution face, because for turning, we just really want to put the, the coordinate system dead center of our part. And with center of revolution face, selected and select face. I'm not going to choose a flat face anymore. I'm going to choose a cylindrical face. The circular face on the outside tells SolidCam where to place the axis. In this case, the z-axis will act as my rotary axis. As you can see, it's dead center of the part. And on most lathes, that's pretty much where it's going to be. Now, if this was a mill turn machine and the x-axis is my rotary axis, then I'd use the options on the left here to flip that around until my x-axis acts as my rotary axis. Let's pretend that the Z axis is our rotary here. We got Z there. X, I just wanted to point it towards the keyway. That way I know which direction is X whenever I look at the part. And also in real life, I can always locate my part off the keyway. Click on the green check mark to accept that. We assign the stock in the same way like we do with milling, like we saw in video three. We'll just go to stock. We have the same options in the left menu here. But again, for the purposes of turning, sometimes cylinder is the easiest one. Cylinder with the mode set to relative to model means I can just click on my solid and it puts a basic bar stock around my part, OD, ID, and length. I define that over here. So in the positive X, Z direction, I have 50 thou. In the negative Z direction from that back face, I have one inch. And externally, I have 0.1 of an inch radially. Can turn that a little bit, you can see there's the 100 thou. If I set this to absolute coordinates, then I just give it the exact ID and OD and length of the part. In this case, again, I can put the 50 thou on the front end. For the negative Z direction, I need to know the overall length of the part. So if I wanted that one inch on the back side, then the three inches of the part plus the one inch gives me that right there, four inches. And then the actual OD of the part, I can set it to whatever I want, absolute. But for our purposes, I'm just going to switch it back to relative to model. I'm going to have my default settings there. As soon as I click the green check mark, it'll actually give me the profile of that stock. The profile is what we use in our turning toolpath. So I don't care what this thing looks like as a whole. I just care what this looks like from the side. I'm only really going to be turning it from the top anyway. So I just want to see what it looks like on this side. The target as well is the same as milling. We're just going to choose the solid as what we want the uh, the part to look like after all our toolpaths. The difference here is though, because we're doing turning, I just care about the profile. So as soon as I choose my solid, I choose which of the of the profiles I want to generate. In this case, either envelope or section. 
envelope will spin the part around and tell me what it looks like as it's spinning. Give me a profile of this thing as it rotates. So that could be a milled part with many flats and features and such, but once that thing is spinning, what do I want to turn out of that part? If I use section, it actually will just give me that XZ plane section of the part. I'll get a, par I'll, I'll get a profile on the top, on the bottom, of what this thing looks like when we slice it right down that plane. But more often than not, I'm doing turning, I just want to generate an envelope. So once I click the green check mark, it spins that solid around and gives me an idea of what that thing is going to look like when it's spun, what I need to turn. So even though I have the plane going through the keyway, you can see it's actually just going to give me a line that represents that diameter right there. So now I can turn and drill this thing and get the part that I'm looking for. So once I click the green check mark, I'm in the window that I want to add tool paths. And then one final thing for this video is the machine setup. No matter which type of part you're doing, either milling or mill turn or turning, you want to add a machine setup. But in terms of turning, it actually is a little more useful because as soon as you have a machine set up, you can actually go and add your fixtures. So if I just go to fixture name, these three dots, I can add a standard fixture, standard chuck, like we see here. So just the three steps. I can tell it where on that chuck I'm, I'm, I'm placing the part, so which step. I can tell it where it's being clamped in terms of diameter. So in this case, it defaulted to the, to the diameter of my stock. But if I highlight that and click on anything, I can get it to be held anywhere. In this case, though, I'll leave it at the OD. I can tell it the size of those jaws. So in this case, let's say something like that. I can tell it the thickness of that profile. So in this case, what we're seeing here, I'll make it 400 thou, and then the number of jaws. That is just the, the radial uh, placement where it's sitting in terms of diameter. So now that I have that profile defined, I can take this window, take a look at how this thing sits in the machine. In this case, you can see it's recessed from the machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move it forward. So let's take a look at that. And I'm just going to move this ahead 10 inches. There's our part. And then in terms of the jaws, let's make that 30 as well. And now it's just a matter of making sure that I've placed all these correctly. So let's just change that back to zero. And I actually want it to be recessed a little bit. So let's take this and let's just move the part forward. And this is now just the wheel on my mouse. I'm just moving it forward like that, kind of eyeballing it. If I really want to put it correctly, I can click on these three dots. I'll pick Z. And now I can pick the axial direction. I want it to be either there or there. Let's say I put it there. So now you can see it's placed correctly. So now the jaws are there. When I do my solid verify or my turning simulations or anything to represent my toolpath, I can see the jaws and I can check for collisions. <clears throat> Any questions of this or anything else from SolidCam, you can always call us at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. You can send us your questions or your parts via the ticket system at solidcamsupport.com or stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.